Thank you. So today I will guide you through the UCF and the forward call. So we'll see what's what changed in MB, then uh, how to apply, um, how to apply in the platform, what are the evaluation criteria, what's the investment concept, what kind of technical activities, uh, technical support we provide to the beneficiaries. And then I wanted to introduce you to some uh, good examples coming from the previous call, from the third call. So, um, for those of you who do not know the facility yet, uh, the European City Facility wants to provide financial and technical support to the municipalities for the development of what we call investment concept. We also aim at building their capacities on sustainable energy and in particular on how to develop a sustainable energy project and access related funding. Financing, financing, sorry. Um, UCF intends to bring municipalities closer to potential investors, both operating at European, national, regional level, and also operating in the private and public sector. So the, the UCF operates within the Energy Efficiency Directive. This is, um, has always been true, but it's uh, even more clear now with this fourth call, and then I will mention it about it later on. We also intend to support the municipalities and the European Commission in reaching the targets of the renovation wave. Uh, indeed, a lot of the projects that we have financed so far do focus on renovation of buildings. Uh, we try to bridge the gap between the climate planning, so the development of action plans, and the implementation of the actions included in them. Uh, more specifically, we want to support the beneficiaries in accessing financing for the development of these actions uh, by supporting them in carrying out uh, sort of preliminary activities that are needed to, to prepare a proposal for investment. Um, the European City Facility is divided into three European regions. Um, as you may know, or in any case, as you can see, Ireland is included in the North and Western countries region. Um, so important, uh, important to know is that the municipalities compete with the other municipalities in the same region. We launched four calls for applications, three are already closed. The fourth one is currently open and will close on the 30th of September at 5 p.m. Central Europe time zone, which means 4 p.m. for Ireland. And uh, this call has a disposal of almost 3 million euro. Uh, more than half a million euro dedicated to the north and western uh, region and uh, we plan to finance nine beneficiaries so nine investment concepts in this region so every beneficiary receives uh, a lump sum of 60,000 euro that shall be used for the development of the investment concept municipalities are free to decide how to allocate the grant it can be used for internal human resources it can be done uh, give to in-house consultant can be subcontracted, however you need. And it can also be used to pay for a variety of activities such as feasibility studies, market analysis, legal, al al sorry, legal analysis, and so on. Um, this was it to the introduction. I don't know if you already have some questions. Unfortunately, I don't think I can see the chat. Otherwise, I will just go on. I'll keep an eye on the chat and just if any if anyone does have questions, feel free to put them in. Or if it's a small group as well, you can unmute if that's okay with you, uh, Mariangela. Okay. Uh, then for binding, I'll continue. So um, DCF is divided into five steps. At first, the municipalities are uh, invited to get to know the facility, what are the requirements, and uh, what we ask them to do. Um, as you know, 3CA, every time we launch a call, organizes a national webinar, as we want today. We, you also have a country expert that can answer to all your questions. We have an help desk and also some uh, guidance material that you can uh, download and read. Uh, once the call is open, of course, you can submit an application. I will come back on this step um, later on. Once that uh, we conclude the evaluation, the selected applicants are contacted for the negotiation and signature of the grant agreement. 
Once the grant agreement is signed, the beneficiary receives uh, the first tranche of payment, which is the 70%, so 42,000 euro, and then has one year to develop an investment concept. Uh, after the year, when the investment concept is submitted and validated, the beneficiary receives the remaining 30% of the grant, so 18,000 euro, and then third, what we call implementation phase or monitoring phase, meaning a two year period where the beneficiary is invited to use the um, investment concept access for the financing through our guidance and support. The application process is um, formed of two steps. One is called eligibility check and it's very quick. And then once you pass this step, you can access the full application. Uh, the eligibility check, as the name suggests, is meant to evaluate whether an applicant is eligible or not. It's formed of the five questions you see on the screen with just yes or no answer. And uh, yeah, so who's eligible for UCF? UCF is open to municipalities, local authorities, uh, their groupings, and to local public entities aggregating municipalities and local authorities. They must be based in one of the European Union member states, in the UK, or in the EAFTA countries. They must have a politically approved action plan with targets for CO2 reduction for at least the year 2020. Uh, they must provide political commitment to the proposal, meaning the mayor should sign a letter of support. And they must commit to the two year monitoring period I mentioned earlier. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, municipalities can apply in groups. We do value groups. Uh, they are particularly appreciated in the evaluation process especially for small municipalities. Um, we do accept both formal and informal groups. Uh, they only need to select one lead applicant. So the municipality that will submit the application on behalf of the group and that will sign the grant agreement. Groups can join either, either with the application, uh, sorry, the action plan of the lead applicant or with a joint action plan if available. Instead for local public entities aggregating municipalities, these are eligible if they are established by national or regional law as a tier of government below provincial level, and if they have an action plan covering the whole area they administer, and they cannot join in a group. Um, once you pass the eligibility check, you enter the full application. The full application is uh, divided into three, in three sections that I will mention in the next slide. And it must be accompanied by six mandatory annexes, um, with the sole exception of Annex 8.1, which is the action plan. Uh, all the other annexes must be submitted in English and using UCF templates. Uh, the lack of usage of UCF template is cause for rejection, as well as the not usage of English, but that should not be a problem for you. These are the three sections of the, of the application form. The first one is the identification of the applicant. Um, of course, it's not part of the evaluation, it's just to serve to understand who you are and whether you are eligible. Um, here, please um, do fill it in correctly. I will show you later on how the form is uh, formed. And if you're joining in a group, please notice that you have to add all the municipalities of the group. The second section is dedicated to understand uh, um, what you're going to do during the investment concept development. So what kind of activities you're asking uh, our support for. Um, here to notice that the allocation of grant amount is not part of the evaluation. We are not giving the scores, whether we are allocating to subcontractors or in-house consultants or whatsoever. It's just there to know that you have a clear idea on how you're going to spend the money. The third section is dedicated to the impact, so the implementation of the investment concept. And um, here again, targeted sector is not part of the evaluation. Um, it's just serves us to understand what the project is about to, and to include you in follow-up activities that I will mention later on. Uh, here, particularly important uh, size of investment and expected impact, but I will come back on this later. So here's some tips slash requests on how to submit a correct application. Again, uh, it should be submitted through the platform in English and the annexes must, must be uh, submitted using the UCF templates. 
Only the action plan can be done, of course, without a template and in national language. Please correctly state the population size because this is a very important evaluation. Please uh, do focus on the governance and stakeholder engagement uh, uh, sections. Um, a common mistake that we notice is about investment size included in the first section. So this field does not refer to the 60,000 euro, but it refers to the investment that your project will trigger. And then a novelty for this fourth call. As I mentioned, we operate within the Energy Efficiency Directive. So contrary to what happened in the past, energy savings are now mandatory. And if you have a project focusing on both energy savings and uh, energy generated by renewable energy sources, the amount of energy savings must be higher than the amount of energy generated. Saying this, it's obvious that you can no longer submit projects focusing only on energy generated by renewable energy sources without measures for energy savings. Um, this is it for the application form. I don't know if you have questions or if I will just explain you how to submit it in the platform. So um, to start the application, you have to go on the UCF website and click on uh, the button on an application. It's quite easy. The first step is the GDP check. Um, as soon as you click uh, on all the answer, you can submit on a check eligibility. And if you are eligible, then you will have this button to uh, register yourself to the UCF user zone or UCF platform. And this is the registration form for municipalities, local authorities, and moving. So first of all, you declare yourself as a municipality or local authority. One of the requests from our side um, the main contact person here is the one that will have the uh, role of creating application, submitting application, but also is the one that will be contacted by the consortium and by the country expert to start the signature of the grant agreement. So please, first of all, take care of these um, fields, add existing emails, do not have text emails that cannot receive uh, our uh, emails and please do not pass at the classic info at unless you do check it regularly. Um, then here you have to state the LAU code of your municipality. If you are applying as a group, the first LAU code should be the one of the lead applicant. And then please add all the LAU codes of all the other municipalities included in the group. This is that the registration form for local public entities advocating municipalities. Um, what's changed here is simply that uh, on the first field, they will select them as local public entities and they don't have the LAU code. Uh, one thing to mention here is that um, you will have a self-declaration among the six mandatory annexes that you have to add. And we have a self-declaration for municipality and a self-declaration for local public entities. Please use the correct form. Okay, once you register, you receive the credentials via email and then you can log in in the platform. And again, the main contact person will be able to open the new, a new application through the yellow button that you will see. If you are already registered, uh, so you already submitted an application in the previous call that was rejected, you will simplify this application in uh, the row where right now it's uh, no data available in this text. And you will have an eye and uh, the classic pen icon to modify the application. Uh, the main contact person can also add other contact person um, that will have only the um, feature to actually edit the proposal but not to submit it. Um, then of course, these are the, again the three sections that uh, I mentioned earlier. And then the main contact person will have the button to submit the application. Everything is done in the platform, both the signature of the grant agreement, the block investment concept, everything is done there. And you also have an help desk that is managed by the core management team. And uh, I do invite you to use it in case you have any questions. And the help desk can also be used by non-registered user 
and you will find uh, the link in the contact page of our website. And now if you do not have questions about the application, I will go through the evaluation process. So the applications are evaluated in two steps. There is a first uh, step called documents check. Um, evaluators check whether you have submitted the application in English using all the annexes in our template. Um, if you do not pass this step, uh, you are notified, the main contact is notified, and your application is rejected without being evaluated. If you pass this step, your, um, your application will be evaluated according to categories, category A and category B. Uh, contrary to what happened in the past, these two categories have now the same weight, so 50-50. Furthermore, category A is both a quantitative and qualitative evaluation. Um, first of all, uh, um, the two amounts are ranked within the region from the highest to the lowest. Then they are evaluated on a per capita point of view. That's why the population is very important. And then evaluators also take into account the local context. So they will assess how ambitious those numbers are actually for that particular municipality. At the end, a final score from zero to five is given which um, criterion. Um, another novelty of this goal is that there is no longer a threshold for category A. So no application will be automatically rejected for having an amount of investment size on energy, energy savings lower than uh, the 350 of the other applications. Category B instead, it's a mere qualitative evaluation. So each uh, criterion is uh, evaluated uh, with a score from zero to five and there is a threshold of three out of five points in order to be selected. Every application that uh, passes the first step receives a feedback record. Um, feedback record is particularly important for rejected applications because not only highlights what were your shortcomings, but also give you some inputs on how to improve um, your application. Uh, the final uh, novelties of this fourth call as I mentioned, uh, applications are ranked and selected within their own region. But as this is the final call of this facility, in case you we have uh, unspent budget because one of the more regions did not have enough applications above the threshold or because uh, one applicant decided to not sign the grant agreement, we will create an European reserved list meaning that uh, all uh, non-selected applicants above the threshold in the respective regions will be simply ranked from the highest to the lowest and the unspent budget will go to the best application. So to recap on what's new, there is a stronger focus on energy efficiency, energy savings are now mandatory and if you do also have energy generated by renewable energy sources, the amount of energy savings must be higher than the amount of energy generated. Um, there is the same weight applied to category A and category B. Category A no longer has a threshold. And if there is a spent budget, this goes to the best application of an European reserve list. Um, Kirky wants an investment concept. So this is a document that can be filled in national language. The template is already available on the website and can be used by anybody, including uh, uh, non-beneficiaries. The document has been uh, validated by several financial institutions uh, at European and the national level, both from the uh, public and private sector, including the European Investment Bank. And it basically serves to translate a project idea into technical and financial terms so that uh, the municipality is facilitated in accessing financing. This is the structural investment concept. Um, well, not so relevant for you, but in case it can be submitted in national language, with the sole exception of the summary that must be submitted in English. You may attach one or more supporting documents if you wish so. The only mandatory attachment is the letter of support from the mayor. Uh, these are the five sections of the investment concept. So the development of uh, the project, uh, stakeholder engagement, legal analysis, financial analysis, and roadmap. Um, once investment concept is submitted, um, goes through a validation. If it's validated, uh, the beneficiary receives the remaining uh, part of the grant. 
if the investment concept lacks a, a mandatory field of information, the user, the beneficiary is notified and has one month to resubmit uh, or revise the investment concept. If, if at the end the investment concept is not validated or it's not, it's not submitted at all, the beneficiary is requested to develop a non-development report and it does not receive the remaining part of the grant. So quickly on the technical support, uh, as I mentioned, we have an app desk, we have country expert that can guide you to the application. We also have uh, guidelines for applicants and FAQs that we invite you to read before applying. Uh, all our documents are online, including the model for the grant agreement, the one for investment concept and so on. I will talk about the knowledge app uh, in uh, the next slide. And of course, we also have a glossary of terms in case some terms using our documents are not clear. With regards to the Knowledge App, first of all, we are building what we call investor network. So a network of financial institutions, uh, both private and public, uh, and operating at European, national, or even regional level. Um, these institutions join the facility because they consider the investment concept as a valid tool to access the funds that they provide. Um, we offer um, several peer-to-peer -peer opportunities, mainly to beneficiaries. An important one is uh, the community of practice. We have five community of practice on sustainable urban mobility, uh, district heating, building integrated renewables, innovative energy infrastructure, and building. Uh, these communities serve as meeting point among beneficiaries so that they can exchange experience, bundle projects, and so on. And then an important activity that we foresee for our beneficiaries are these matchmaking events where they will have the opportunity to present their investment concept to the financial institutions that validated it. Um, as I mentioned, I wanted to introduce you to some of the practices coming from the third call. I know there were two beneficiaries from Ireland in the third call, but unfortunately I did not have time to collect information about them. So I ho hope you don't uh, mind if I will present a uh, few good practice coming from Cyprus and from Sweden. I selected this one from Cyprus because I think it's very interesting. It comes from an island, from small municipalities that joined in a group. Um, as I do remind you that we do value groups, especially for small municipalities. Um, they want to use the UCF funds to develop a project on uh, green mobility, renewable energy sources, and heating system. As you can see, uh, they will install TV panels, mainly on roofs, and then use the energy uh, generated, not only to power up buildings, but also electric vehicles. These again are other details about activities that we'll perform. Um, they also intend to create a sustainable mobility network, connecting the municipalities to the capital through electric buses. And finally, they also want to upgrade the eating system. So they will install a district eating or community eating system in three municipalities and four schools. And these are some data about investment concept proposed. Now, I do stress on the fact that this was financed in the third poll, where the criteria were slightly different. It would not be financed in this fourth poll because the energy savings, as you can see, are lower than the energy generated. But the activities are still very relevant and very interesting for UCF. The second example comes from Lund in Sweden, which is in the Northwest region, so in your region. Um, Lund is a very ambitious city. It's also one of the 100 city missions of the European Commission. And they applied to UCF to develop an investment concept on a project on sustainable mobility, public building, innovative energy infrastructure, and carbon capture measures. So first of all, they want to install uh, renewable energy source, sources, over 450 buildings. They also want to build an electric road to fuel electric vehicles. Um, they're building a district heating uh, fueled by bioenergy, geothermal heat, wind power, and hydrogen. In particular, they will use UCF to finance feasibility studies on how on the potential 
to generate um, energy from wind power and then use the energy generated to produce hydrogen and then store the hydrogen and uh, use it whenever needed. Finally, uh, very innovative uh, measures, at least for UCF. They are using UCF to um, carry out a feasibility study uh, on uh, a method called BEPS, which, if I'm not mistaken, stands for bioenergy carbon capture and storage. So basically, they want to reduce the CO2 emission in the atmosphere by capturing, the, capturing it, uh, storing it in the ground and then planting trees that can absorb it and therefore reduce, it, reduce its level in the atmosphere. They will also use uh, biochar to, to improve the soil and water purification in the area. And these are some numbers about the investment concept, which as you can see, is very ambitious. And this was it actually from my side. Thank you. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, Colin, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, no, I can hear you. Uh, not in and uh, chat anyway. I think if there aren't any questions, we can call it here, so. If someone wants to unmute as well, uh, don't feel the need to type it out. You can just unmute yourself. <laughs>